everybody. Hey. Happy Tuesday. Taco Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Dalton was mad. No tacos tonight. He gets mad if we don't get, he thinks every Tuesday you must have tacos. I am joined by Rod, my co-host, picking and punching. Below me is Ben, Ready, Set, Resell. He has hey. been on before, but it's been a while. It's been a yeah, long time. And then Caddy Corner is Adam, Scentsy Flipper. I wanted to real quick so I don't forget my good friend Sam, Jolie Flips. Her dad was just called for a kidney transplant. So he just went into surgery. So if you guys could keep him in your thoughts, look at their height. <laughs> Broad, why can't we do that? Do it. <laughs> do it. He's like, what? what? No. Like Never this? mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, so keep Sam's dad in your thoughts. He is going in for his kidney transplant. He's been waiting for a long time and got the call. So we are happy for him. All right. I'm going to make Ben and then Adam big so they can tell you about themselves. And then we will get to your questions. All right, Ben. Behave. Here you go. Uh, hey, guys. I'm Ben. Ready, set, resell. Uh, you can follow me here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. Uh, I do a lot of reselling, mainly on eBay. Uh, I do a lot of clothing, as you can see behind me. I also do toys, video games, stuff like that. If you have any questions for me, let me know. Perfect. Here's Adam. Hey, everyone. My name is Adam uh, Sensi Flipper. Um, I've you can follow me here, here on YouTube, Most more active on Instagram, hoping to get YouTube up and running this year. Primarily an Amazon FBA seller. Um, second best is eBay, and I've been doing that for about 15 years. So ask away. Happy to be here. Perfect. All right. Let's see what we got. What do we got? Daryl wants to know how do you ship little pin back buttons and what rate? I don't sell them. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would. I assume you meant like, uh, like, like this, back, like then. little enamel pins. Yeah, like this. Uh, oh, I, I, if that was me, I'd probably just throw them on a piece of cardboard and make sure they're secure, and then throw them in a padded envelope. Yep, something to, like, like you said, cardboard keep UPS your USPS from destroying it, and then bubble mailer it. Have little stuff. Like probably that. be the, probably be the best source. So if you guys have been following me in, on whatnot, you guys know I sell thousands and thousands of Disney pins. Uh, so oh, all these pin eyes. I've been yeah. I, if my I've, I've been buying massive collections. I'm down here in Florida and I'm just crazy. But uh, I usually just throw a bubble wrap around them and throw them in a and just a poly poly mailer and just ship them flat rate, not uh, not flat rate, uh, ground advantage. So yeah, same here with my Harley pins. I put them in a piece of bubble wrap. We used to do jewelry boxes, but the jewelry box has moved inside for whatnot. So now we just do a piece of bubble wrap and throw them in a padded mailer and they go ground advantage. Yeah, the crazy thing. Yeah. Oh, especially when you like I bought 600 Harley pins at the same time and they were selling for 15 up to $100 for a single one, which was crazy. Yeah. I know some of the Disney pins can go crazy, too. I met a girl when I, eBay flew me out there. Uh, Mighty pins. She was their whole shop is just Disney pins and she goes crazy on them. I didn't even know some of those can go for like 50, 60, 70 bucks for a single pin. It's nuts. <laughs> Ron, That's tell him how much. Hold on. Just wait. <laughs> Ron, how much did your so, last Disney pin sell for? So this month I sold one Disney pin for, it was a 40 year old. If you work for the company for 40 years, you got a, a pin and I sold that for a thousand dollars. And then I had, hold on. <laughs> I had another oh, one that was more. 45 years of service. You had to work for the company for 45 years to get that pin. That pin's I mean, they work for that company longer than I've been alive. That's yeah. sold for two thousand dollars. So, <laughs> yeah, for a pen, per that is pin. It is literally like the size of my thumb, like just the tip of my thumb. Like it's like What'd a real tiny one. Yeah. What'd you pay for it, Rod? Wow. Uh, in the bundle, I paid. So the first in that lot, I paid twenty five hundred dollars, but I got all the service pins. I got six hundred other pins. I got a massive Disney art collection. I got those. Giant Disney trains. So I still won the trains for six hundred, and then the other one I'm about to list for between three and four thousand dollars. So I probably got. I estimate originally I bought a ten thousand dollar collection. I think it's closer to like fifteen to twenty thousand. So wow. And then I bought before that, dude. I bought a. Uh, I bought twenty six hundred pins off another guy, and then before that, I bought five hundred. Yeah, it's just been like a whirlwind. Like he's been, been like. Disney. 
where you get like honed yeah. in one thing and then you have like a thousand of them. Yeah, it, it I just, mean, if you're going to get honed in, instant collection, collection there. Something that's small and super easy to store, yeah. ship, all that. It's that's great. Yeah. They've been perfect for whatnot know. because I can just do niche down on shows and there's I can knock out, sell 100 items and ship it out within 30 minutes. Like it's just, yeah, that's perfect. so nice. Yeah. All right. Debbie wants to know where do you get your boxes for ground advantage since, as most of us should know, you cannot use priority boxes for yeah. ground advantage. Uh, so first and foremost, I use my uh, eBay supply code every quarter, and that's what I get is boxes on it. And then I also buy uh, the majority of my other ones just in bulk on Uline and have one big shipment come to my house, and that's where I get them all. So I actually uh, set up – I actually get all my boxes for free. Um, I have a thing with – I live in a, um, a neighborhood with about 40, 50 houses. They just – when they get Amazon Chewy deliveries, they just drop them in front of my garage and nice. store them in there. So yeah. it's been nice. I haven't had to pay for a box in probably almost three years. Nice. So I use Supply Hut sometimes, even though I know a lot of people don't like Supply Hut for the, <laughs> the scandal a while back. But uh, I do that. And also, too, like a little thing is if you know, if you live in like a like a neighborhood, a community neighborhood too is you know when recycle day is just drive around your neighborhood on recycle day you'll find and you fill up entire car full of boxes too oh yeah yeah Done that a couple couple of times they just leave yeah. them so nice yeah i we keep all our amazon boxes we use our ebay shipping coupon for boxes every time and then i actually just comp like if i need like we use eight by eight a lot and eight by six by four for hats um I just will comp eBay and Amazon. I buy it wherever they're cheapest. I buy them like 200 to 250 most of the time quantity. Um, and somebody had said there were free ones. I don't believe that is true because <laughs> that would be like them giving us first class boxes. So yeah, you, you have to buy them. So I want to actually make a point. If the box costs you like a dollar, some of those boxes can cost a dollar each. Sometimes priority is less expensive. It's less than a dollar if it's close to you. I then switch them to priority and use a free box because it's cheaper. So check that because like I was surprised in Florida from Florida to Florida. It was actually $6.77 for priority the other day hmm. under seven bucks, which was absolutely crazy. All right, Laura wants to know how long it takes us to list an item. She thinks she writes too much in the description. Oh, my! I, I make my listing process super concise. So I have a I have templates saved, and that's all I do is fill in my item name. That so if I'm if I'm listing this shirt back here, it'd be like I do my keywords: Disney shirt, you know, Fire and Ice 2013, all that stuff. And then my my template is auto pasted in, and it's just color blue uh size large and then i put measurements and then everything else is just auto filled and then i just scroll to the bottom put in the price scroll down done so may yeah. maybe maybe two minutes if if i'm going slow if i need to edit pictures i say yeah when you get it get that process going probably about a minute per item uh so i do the thing most of what i do on ebay is video games uh vcrs electronics i've got so things that there's plenty available where I don't really have to write like a custom name description. I do the find the solds, sell similar. And then I've really been liking the new AI description. Mm -hmm. Just plug that in, yeah. make sure it doesn't, I do a lot of sports cards too. So it's like, make sure it doesn't say there's an autograph or something on a card that's not, and then uh, leave it alone. I'll go to my bulk lister, uh, put in the shipping. Cause I just do ground advantage for pretty much everything and about a minute a piece. A lot more streamlined features now. Yeah, mine, I do sell similar. I mean, usually my process is pretty simple. It takes about a minute or two just like everyone else. But honestly, I my description is barely anything. I copy my title and put it right in my description. That's all I do. And I only add stuff to it if I need it. If there's any like flaws in the product or any damage to the product, um, that though, I keep it short and simple. People don't read descriptions anyway. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean... <laughs> So, I mean, they barely look at the, all the photos. They look at the first photo and the title, and that's it. So, I get so yeah. many the measurements, and then it's like, see description. <laughs> yes. <Right there. laughs> 
Yeah, for us, we bulk do them or like I don't I don't do a lot of listing anymore. I have employees that do it, but um, they'll photograph in like sets of 10, take the photographs, edit the photographs. We use cell similar and I love the AI description. We use that for everything. So I don't write anything in the description unless like Rod said, it's a flaw that I want to highlight and then I'll put it in bold and italics and put see stain on shirt look at photos something like that so that's the only time that i actually write something myself in the description i think spending a lot of time on description wastes a ton nobody reads it even if you put that there's a flaw they buy it and then they return it for the reason that's in bold and italics and underlined because they didn't read it like yeah it's a pain in the butt but they they don't they don't read it. I think on Etsy they might a little bit more, but on eBay, yeah. I don't think so. Do you cross list over to Etsy a lot of stuff? I stopped listing on Etsy about three months ago because okay. the listing, even with cross posting yeah. at, was taking so long, like because they wanted so much more information mm -hmm. that the sales didn't equate the time that listing on there. So I stopped. And I think November last year, I was like, it's not worth it. Jessica wants to know what do you think? Which photo editing app do you think is better for Android, Pixel Cut or Photo Room? So if you use either one of them, whether you're Android or not, uh, I don't use a photo editing app anymore, and I'm not an Android user. But I did use Photo Room for a while when I cared about the white background. Then I just stopped caring. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I just I had used Photo Room when I wanted to remove the white background, but now that eBay has integrated it in, I pretty much that's the extent I use it. Yeah, I use I have Photo Room, but do you guys see the new one, Smart Sizer for shirts now? I did. Have you tried it out? I haven't. What? But I, where? I is, what know. is that? So it's it's a new app where you literally lay your shirt flat, and it actually takes the measurements for you. Yeah. yeah supposedly, and the photos all at one time. It's called Smart Sizer. Yeah, I, I haven't. Oh, I, I just downloaded it today. I haven't tried it out yet. I'm, but I mean. I saw Casey post something about Rockstar Flipper post something about it on his uh, IG account. So I, I checked it out and stuff. And he said he double checked his measurements and they were, they were spot on. Wow. That's so, that would be beautiful. Yeah. That'd be so nice. Yeah. Yeah. That would be beautiful. Oh, Ro Oh, I, I have an answer. I use photo room. I still use photo room. I like the AI backgrounds on photo room only for expensive stuff. Like if it's like 60 plus dollars, I'll do like a cool AI background, one picture. But other than that, I like, I'm right now I'm listing a bunch of all the dance goes. If you watch my thrifting channel, I got a ton for three bucks each and they're listing at like 65 bucks plus. So I'm doing like one AI photo of them and then the rest are just white. I'm still OCD about the white. I still care, <laughs> even though Ben, ben doesn't care. All right. <laughs> MC Han said, just curious, what control do you have over the ads on your YouTube videos? Do you have any control over link frequency product services? Yeah, we can control, um, you know, if we want end roll, mid roll or ads before the videos, then we can in the mid roll ads, we can actually choose when they pop in lately. I've, let, I've just been letting YouTube auto populate mine. But as long as it's like, I usually I usually try to do like one ad per five minutes of video. I think it's a pretty fair time. So You can skip me. I don't think I have ads. <laughs> Not popular <laughs> enough yet. <laughs> so, so I'm going to give you a little inside on, on eBay and on that eBay, on YouTube. So on YouTube, you can actually place your ads whenever you want. So you can place an ad every 10 seconds, every minute, every 5, 20, however long you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Even if I place my ads every minute or like, like he just said, every five minutes in, in the video, YouTube actually bases the ads based on your watch history. So if you're the type of person that actually watches the ads all the way through you're going to get more ads pop up in your video pop up when you watch it so even if i place my if i place a 10 minute video i place 10 ads in that 10 minute video you're not going to get all 10 of those ads it's going to be based on your watch history so that that actually came out youtube that confirmed that um so it's going to vary based on the user and who's watching so all of us could watch the same video and all have different amount of ads in it because it's based on our history of, of it 
Well, we have no control over the length or what it yeah. is, guys. Yeah. So we don't know who they are placing the video, like the products, the services, the length we have no control over. Now we can choose if we want to put ads that are not skippable and are skippable. I used to only put skippable, um, but as my channel grew, I added some that are not skippable. Um, but we can't, it's, it's funny to watch and people will tell me what they're seeing on it and it amuses me sometimes, but we don't know. And each of you will get different ads depending on who you are. So YouTube's going to focus on who you are and what they and, think you will like. And it's going to be based off your search history too, because the, the catch in your, on your search on your Google and on your YouTube is going they to listen. notify them. Yep. They, they listen. listen. <laughs> so that's how, and that they're going to determine what kind of ad you're going to get as well, you know, based off your search history. So if you guys don't clear that out, that's why you keep getting similar ads pop up. Maybe things you just searched. Yeah. Listen, the only thing really I, have... I use that to my advantage now. Like I can talk about stuff that I want to find and like, then it comes up in ads on Instagram. <laughs> so you got to use it to your advantage. Yeah. The only, the only control we really have over uh, ads is if you're, if your video is a sponsored video by someone then oh, you know yeah, we have true. control over what we like say if we're so, doing the yeah. ad ourselves yeah and you but Which, usually at that point in time is where we're, we're to the mercy of the the ad advertiser of how long they actually want it though too but i mean that's yeah. something you can negotiate with them and go through dude i get so many junk emails for spam oh, every annoying. day it's every so day annoying. man yeah. Yeah. We don't have any, con somebody told me one of the ads was like five minutes or something. We have no control over the length of. Well, they can skip those ads. ads. Yes. So, so that's based on their history. So if they're, they're the person that maybe has in the background and they're walking around the house doing other stuff done, they may get. That's what they said. Ads. Look, <laughs> yep. they're, they're working and they have to go yes. over and skip it. So some yeah. of them probably play through mm -hmm. and then. So this goes right with that last that. question. We should just answer this question too. Um, does YouTube premium affect us since those users don't get ads? Do you know the answer to that, Ben? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I know we, in our revenue thing, we can see like the split between YouTube premium users and regular. So we get a users. split. So you're nine yeah, ninety nine a month. It's split between all the YouTube content creators yeah, you watch. Yeah, so if you're so watching ten of us, we get like ninety cents free. <laughs> yeah, it's put in a big, it's put in a giant pool. Is based off how many watch, how many YouTube premium users actually watch your actual channel, and then it's based off a percentage of that and it's pulled down. So it's actually split between everybody. Yeah. So. Um. Lala said she did not sell anything tonight on whatnot. Does any, like, do we all use a certain category? Like we would do like all pet stuff. I'll give an example. I know the last show of Ben's I watched, he did all hats. Um, she said she's thinking like her stuff is all over the place. So do you recommend they stick to like one genre? I mean, if you have a bunch of, like she just said, I did a bunch of hats the other night. That's just because I had... A bunch of hats so if i have enough to do a full show then i'll do an all hat show but i mean if you if you have a bunch of random stuff just go in the estate sale category and and have at it i mean i'm not the best authority on whatnot because i i stopped doing my shows for quite a while but i mean that's what i would do so i always recommend i mean Niching down is good on whatnot, I because then that's how you build a following for that category, and it has to be something people are interested in. But if you're just selling a, a hodgepodge of a bunch of stuff, I mean, you know, like Ben said, this the state category, the storage unit category is the best one to do it. They also have a yard yeah. sale category. Usually, when I do my like blowout sales, like I do, you guys have been seeing that there, I do it in the storage unit slash estate sale category, just a blowout, and I just grab any, anything in there. So, you know, that's you're gonna mixture of stuff. Um, and then I do my other ones that are based just strictly Disney shows. I do those in Disney category. So uh, it's just based on what you do. But you need to be consistent. And you need to bring quality items to the shows. At, a, at Get people. Here's the thing. Think of it this way. If you had a, you know, a brick and mortar store, you're going to run deals and promotions for people to come in there. So you know, there's a reason why grocery stores do buy one, get one free. There's a reason why they do these where they lose money on certain products. Because they're hoping that when you go to the show, you're gonna you, you you may lose money on one or two items, but they're gonna make you're gonna make your money on rule of averages on the other stuff that people buy. 
You know, so when like I do my shows, I put stuff up that's 40, 50 bucks for five bucks. So people are going to come because they know they can get a good deal and stuff. And that item goes 10, 15 bucks below what, you know, I could get on eBay. So be it, you know, people getting good deals. That means those people are going to come back in the future. So it is a, it is a long game. It is, it is difficult when you start out. You just got to keep at it at first. And it's not for everyone. I will say that, but I will say like, feel free to reach out to us too. If you ever need any help, I mean, more than welcome to come to any of my shows. I'm doing a show next week. I will promote you and let you promote your show in my show. And uh, I do allow people to do that. So. Yeah, I, I mean, but there's also like the storage categories that are all over the place that are doing unboxings. So, yeah. I mean, it really depends on you. I would say if you're new, I would catalog it, take photos so that like people can see what you have. They could ask you to run something if they come in so they don't have to wait. We're actually probably going to go back to doing some catalog shows. We had only been running on catalog. Um, uh, I, I'm, I don't feel like I'm like an expert on whatnot anymore either because I stopped doing shows back in November regular. I've done a few this month, but not at all like I was doing. So I, I would say if you're new, I would try to niche down, but yeah, I see people like doing well. I was doing five a lot. week. Yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah. made like, 225,000 on whatnot yeah. last year. Um, but I mean, the profit margins are way lower. So I had to spend a ton of money to make that, especially in jewelry. Um, and then the sales have kind of fell off for me. I talked to a couple other people that said the same thing, but, and I don't know if Sandy's in here. Um, I watched Sandy's show, My Flipping Van Life. I was in bed and that sucker made $2,000 in 15 minutes. And I'm like, holy hell. That's like my video I just did that like whatnot's not the problem. It's you. It's me. Like I'm the problem. Yeah. I, I, if, if somebody else can make two grand in 15 minutes, so could I if I had the right stuff, you yep. know, and I know that. And I'm just I feel like I'm not on my whatnot game. If that, you know, I kind of burn out on it. I was doing it so much. I, I, need I don't know what uh what kind of stuff you you have Lala and stuff, but if you do any clothing and stuff, I'd say watch some other uh people doing clothing. Uh, Kway Shop, he does really really good on clothing stuff. So he's someone I would definitely check out because he's someone who's very consistent on his stuff. He's on his game during shows and he's got quality items. I mean, he's a great person to look at. Yeah, especially in the category that you're selling too, is if you're niching down, you know, watch the other sellers in there, go in, interact with the chats in those categories. You know, you can even ask the sellers if they allow you to promote your shows in there. You know, I go through when I first started, I would go in and tip a bunch of people, like just tip them a dollar. You know what I mean? Get a shout out for there because people keep seeing your name in the certain categories. They're going to see your shows pop up then. It just, you know, I'm not saying you have to tip people, but I'm just saying it's a good way to help get yourself out there. It's like paying for advertising in a way. But yeah. I did a whatnot yeah, before this like before tonight's show actually. <laughs> <laughs> was like it a good show? Grand. Yeah, I did like five hundred bucks in like an hour and fifteen minutes. So selling yeah, Disney film. Can't beat that. Yeah. All right. Becky wants to know is media rate the cheapest for sending a few educational postcards? Four dollars seems like a lot for six postcards. Uh for postcards, I think you can send them in an eBay standard envelope. And I'll tell you right now. Uh, so you brought up postcards specifically. If you guys follow Walter Blake on Instagram, he's yeah. currently doing an experiment with postcards and he's listed over the last month. It's something like 10,000 postcards because he's automated the entire process. And oh, like the, with the scanner thing. Yeah. It's this, it's the, it's the best like game changer reseller move I've seen out of a content creator in a long time. And it's amazing. I, yeah, I was just about to mention. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I've been watching like the progress he's made on it. It's it's insane. The yeah. just go through that he has. He posted today some like numbers. Yeah, uh, where it was like I think he's for this month while he's still kind of figuring out. He's up like I think two hundred, three hundred. Yeah, and he, I think he's got overall, like 10, he's got like sixteen thousand postcards left. Insane. But yeah, he's <laughs> up to like listing like what what was his last number like two thousand an hour or something like something yeah, insane. Crazy. Wow, he was getting up to like a thousand listings an hour or something. But yeah, to yeah, answer was... your question, yeah, you can send. They just it was just sports cards under twenty dollars. So they just moved it out to other categories, and postcards is one of those for the 
uh, standard envelope. Yeah, standard. So like sixty four cents, I think is the cheapest. Now, b- both of them are right. You can ship out, but I think if you're shipping six, you're going to have to ship it through the ground advantage because it's going to be too thick because it has to be a certain, uh, yeah. can we, you're going to fit like three cards, like sports cards that go through it at a time. Um, but s- shipping six, maybe too thick for, for the, the size of it. You would just have to double check. Oh, it. Becky doesn't do eBay. So on pirate ship. Yes. That's going to mm. be your oh, cheapest. Okay. Yeah. 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 You could probably like, if it's not eBay and you're not worried about tracking, you could probably just throw it in like a card envelope and just put stamps on it. I would think if you're not worried about tracking, that's, I did take out the, look, I did take out the puppet, man. I put a regular picture of myself for the first time in three years without the crazy puppet. Um, His name. Oh, now you're going to, Oh, why did I? Oh, it's Sir Andrew after Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady's other half. We named him Sir Andrew after Jocelyn's other half. Oops. Jocelyn helped me name him. I'm going to see Jocelyn this weekend. Um, a lot of us, so you guys know, um, I see Gino there. Uh, myself, Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady, Dagny Flying Pig Thrifts. Me and Dagny are going hanging out all day tomorrow. They're all down here from Pennsylvania. Kate, follow that bug vintage. Sandy. My flipping van life, George. There are going to be a lot of us in Mount Dora this weekend. So if you guys are in Florida, that is where all of us will be at for the whole for the whole weekend. Oh, I just for realized I forgot to respond to you in regards to that when you messaged I me. I asked earlier. Rod if he was going like hours yeah. ago, and he just yeah, ignored forgot. me because that's what he does. Ben didn't answer for like two days though, so you still have time to beat him. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, how can asking, I remove? What, some- what what, was, huh? They were asking Ben, what was his name? It's Walter Knobloch, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, on Instagram, it's WB Knobloch. I'll, I'll type in the chat. Yeah, there you go. All right, Ben's going to throw it down there for you guys. Shirley wants to know, how can I remove st- store categories? I started putting them in when I first started. Now I want to remove them. Ben's too distracted typing, Adam. <laughs> Sorry, what am I doing? Sorry. <laughs> <I'm eating something. laughs> Thank him multi <laughs> Oh, uh, re- I think it's just a, a thing in your settings. You can just go in and remove it. I don't know exactly what it's under. I haven't messed with my store categories in forever. You just change it. It's really easy. I'll, like all you do is manage store and use eBay categories instead of your own store categories. That's it. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, but if you remove them from, if they have them in categories, don't you have to remove them from the category before you can delete no, the category? No, because I started making them too, and then I was like, what the hell? I sell too much crap to try and do this. And then I changed it back to eBay categories. So, like, my whole store is just by eBay categories because, like, it's a joke with how much stuff I sell trying like I'd make a new category and I'd have that for like a month and then I wouldn't you know I don't ever get it again so it was a waste of time Noni wants to know did eBay take off that ridiculous negative feedback for you they did not if you would like to go look at my eBay store the ridiculous negative feedback is still sitting there um and I'm hoping when I, when the return closes, it will automatically be removed. But eBay's changed how they're doing that. So I'm not sure if it's going to be. I'll update you, but the sucker has a month to return it. So until it's returned, that negative is going to sit there. And I, I just, requested them to revise it, and they ignored me. So Speaking of returns, I just hit with a $175 return my department 56 village busted in shipping oh, oh my gosh it's the worst yeah it's putting it in a clearance yeah here's what yeah. it is on the uh, on the so feedbacks just, yeah. dude i i got a feedback like uh, earlier last week and it was it was a neutral feedback and it said i received my item but i haven't wore it yet <laughs> <laughs> what how dare you <laughs> At least it oh, wasn't God. negative. Like they could have hit you with the negative. It wasn't positive yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. Like this lady left me a feedback and said the color was different than the photos. I don't think it was. And then she said, and seller's not reimbursing shipping. Well, you didn't send me the friggin' thing back. And now, guess what? Now I'm not. There's no way in hell I'm reimbursing or shipping now. Yeah. She's not getting it. But I would have. <laughs> But no, I'm not. All right. 
Laura sent us a $5 super chat here. I'm going to give you a whale. Here's a whale. I like that. I think Gino, Gino's who makes all those super chats for me. I think Gino is going to be at Renander's this weekend too. So they're, they're going to be a lot. It's like 20 something acres though. So it's, you, you could go and not run into any of us. Um, so Kat, are you doing, what days are you doing that? Uh, I'm at Airbnb. So I'm going down Friday and stay until Sunday. Are you doing Webster and Monday? Cause it's a, it's a, isn't a holiday? I might. Are you guys going? I could meet you I there. Think yeah. go, I think I'm going to go Monday. And then uh, Wednesday, on Sundays, too, I think Brown's doing that. They're uh, junk in the They're trunk, doing too. On... This Sunday, though? I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, I, I know it's... I'll still be at Renninger's unless I'm, like, totally over it, but I doubt it. But, I, yeah, I can probably do – I need to write it down or I'll forget. Um meet you guys at Webster, but you got to tell me which size. That's like the same thing. It's like so big. If you don't tell me where you're at, I'll never find you. Yeah, it's it's going to be twice. It's going to be massive because it's the holiday too and school. I out. like the grass side. Like, do you guys go on the side with the grass or the rose? Um, we don't go. I mean, we say we, we do all the outdoor vendors. So like. That's what I mean. Like not, not the under the covering thing. Yeah. Where it's just in the middle of the parking lot, the grass. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that's the grass. Good. Yeah, that's where that's all, yeah, that's I That's all we, we much do. All right. Camille says she's getting more into selling clothing. What do you think are hot up-and-coming brands to look out for for clothing? Uh, up-and-coming brands. Um, uh, I mean, anthropology stuff for women's been hot uh, a lot. So I've noticed a lot of brands that are coming into style are starting to be um, outdoors wear is starting to be real hot. So obviously you got like your Patagonias and your North face, North faces, but like stuff like LL Bean's been going up in price a little bit. The um, you look at some of the other brands, look at like outdoor research, look at um, Rab, look at uh, you know, any of the outdoor brands really, I think have been really, really hot lately. REI has been spiking again too. I've noticed that start to trend up a little bit. Yeah, outdoor wear is hot right now. Yeah. A big thing too for a lot of people is following like pop culture too. Rappers, yep. Taylor Swift. What's going on? If you watch all ta whatever Taylor Swift wears oh to the God. Chiefs game, I mean, dead serious. So those jackets, those Chiefs yep. jackets, they're what like 40, 50 bucks. They're selling for anywhere from one hundred eighty to two hundred twenty-five bucks for those. Like, <laughs> you yep. know what I mean? They're, it's it's crazy to see that. But like Kanye West, like anytime he would rock stuff. Uh, a lot of other people, man. That's you want to keep up with pop culture because what they're wearing is what's going to be selling. Especially yeah, just there, throwing there's a Bob Marley movie coming out. I, I expect a Bob Marley. Oh yeah, it's coming, coming out tomorrow time. on Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah. Uh, yep. I haven't really kept up with it, but I imagine there's probably a spike in that. Oh, I right. have some Bob Marley shirts listed too. Woo! Dude, I got a I got there a go. badass Bob Marley vintage tee back there, '97 with the tags. It's sick, but unfortunately, it's uh, it's dry rotten. Uh, uh -huh. and people put that in a frame, and frame the it, though. yeah oh it's so worth it just it's in my personal right now <laughs> <laughs> all right noni i think so noni i will the will the greeting cards fall under that standard envelope like the postcards do you guys think i think yes, they will so. I actually, just pulled, actually just pulled up their blog post just because we had a couple questions about it eligible categories for that is now patches Stickers and decals, greeting cards, seeds, trading cards, coins and currency, which I would think that would wouldn't be machinable. So that's kind of surprising. Uh, postcards and stamps. Seeds is yeah. one. Yeah, that. Getting get some restart. watermelon seeds yeah. off eBay. <laughs> like, the first thing I sold on eBay was plants, Ben. I sold really? only plants. Dude. Yeah. Huh. One of, one of the people that I talked to relatively recently on Instagram popped in my DMs. Um, they recently got out of like the clothing space and stuff, but they were selling. They'd messaged me. They're like, dude, I, don't, I know it's not your thing, but look at this. And they sent me videos of what they did. He was selling purple lotus flowers or something like that. I forget what they were. They were like dried flowers. He bought them in bulk. By, I think it was like 
200 bucks worth of them in bulk and then he's been reselling them and he, on that 200 dollars purchase he's resold them in smaller lots on etsy i think he's, he's at like 10 grand or something like that net yeah plants was all i did for like the first long long time i sold chicken eggs on ebay some of them for up to a hundred dollars a dozen for people to hatch in their incubators i've sold all kinds of crazy oh, wow. stuff that's yeah. a weird little niche. You sell plants. Got a cat. Got it. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> there's, a, there's a local seller here in Chicago. It little, it's just a little quirky thing. Uh, here in Chicago, they go to the estate sales and buy the old dolls. They make up a spooky story about how they're haunted and then sell them as oh, a yeah. haunted doll on eBay. Yeah. And that's their entire business. <laughs> you just make up a story about it. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they turn like a, a $15 doll into like a $200 doll with stories. Siggy mm -hmm. wants to know if you like the bulk uh, send offers on the mobile app for eBay. I've never used it. Yeah, I live and die by the, the bulk send offer. I liked it before this last update where you have to go to actions and then send the bulk offer where before it was just the one click, but that was such a nice feature that because I can knock out five offers a day super quick. I prefer to send it one by one because I send out different offers for different stuff. I love it because I only do either 10% or 30% off. So I can just look through because I have in my custom SKU the date it was listed, pick the new ones for 10% off, go through, select all on the rest and send 30% off really fast. Uh, a lot... A lot of the time I do it on the computer, but like when I'm out at Renninger's this weekend, I'll send offers a couple of times throughout the day. And that makes it a lot easier on the phone than sending it individually. Let's see. Ooh, USPS just smashed a brooch recently, flattened it like roadkill, a $200 brooch, well padded. I had to find a tiny pearl and solder it together and reset the diamond like new. Yeah, so I will tell you guys, like we were saying the pens we were sending in the padded with cardboard, if anything is over $50 for me, yeah, it's yeah. going in a box. Yep. I sold a $260 sticker. That sucker got put in cardboard, got wrapped in <laughs> bubble wrap, and then it got put in a box. Um, yep. pay, like the price should really dictate how you pack things, guys. No matter how unbreakable you think it, like bubble, I, we bubble wrapped a like two hundred dollar teddy bear before. You know how like it does? I don't care if it's two hundred dollars. I'm gonna yep, pack like it's breakable. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I was a mailman for about eight months, so I, when I'm packing something like. This would get smashed because I got I've seen how they how they treat it behind the scenes. If, if you <laughs> yeah. think it's well packed enough, it, it's not well packed enough. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you didn't watch my video that came out yesterday, Mr. Jake here, J Ride Flips, I talk about him in it and share his 90 day on my video from yesterday. Jake wants to know what size store would be ideal for us, and then how big is our store now? Like as according to like the eBay store sizes. Uh, no, like how many items or like oh. what would be your ideal? <laughs> ideally, uh, <laughs> ideally, <laughs> I'd like to have very few items and make a lot of money. <laughs> um, but no, I my store usually hovers right around the, uh, the like a thousand items is what I can comfortably handle by myself when it's a lot of clothing and stuff. If I go any more than what I have now, I would need to hire somebody. And if I go any less than what I have now, I uh, actually wouldn't mind that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a nice so my store right now uh first of all time full-time has hovered right around 450 to 500 in stock um and that's most it's mostly clothes and then like the video games that like where i do mostly fba i think i have about like about 1500 items there now um so it's nice not having those in my garage <laughs> mm -hmm. um but it's mostly stuff that gets returned from there that it's not worth me sending back in or just the miscellaneous like hair dryers, VCRs, um, and that kind of stuff. So right around that 400, 500 item mark is kind of where I want to keep my store. So for me, I currently have about 12 to 1300 items in my store, uh, but I probably have thousands more on the list. I uh, have sourced way too much. So that's why, you know, ideally now 
for my eBay store, I would like to have it around seven, 800 items, to be honest with you. I would like to downsize my eBay store. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, just for the fact that I would, I do pay for an offsite storage facility, you know, because I do get, you know, I have so much stuff. So I do keep some merchandise there and, you know, my bulk buys I keep there and, and rotate stuff through. Um, that's why whatnot's been great because I've been moving a ton of stuff and whatnot. But ideally, I would like to downsize to not have to pay for extra storage and be able to just the quick get stuff in, flip it and whatnot, put the better stuff on eBay, raise my average sales price, and just keep that rotation going. Yeah. So I am almost at seven thousand listings. Um, I it's it's growing and growing because I have two eBay employees. They list like two to three hundred items a week. Um, and I can find that with no problem at all. Um, so, I, but I really don't want to go over that 10,000 mark. So I have to pay more for a store. So I would like, I'm trying a lot to concentrate on sell through rates. So some of this stuff is moving out as we're listing. So I would just like to keep mine under 10,000. 10, we have the space. So like we have three sheds. I actually made my rental house which is right next door into another storage area. So we've got well over 4,000 square foot of space for stuff. So space isn't an issue. I have been thinking lately though about getting back into furniture because it's really high profit mm -hmm. and now freight rates are back down. So I've been looking at furniture. Um, so we might get back into some freight. And I had a freight company actually message me about advertising for them and giving me and all of you guys a discount. So I might talk to them about that a little bit more yeah. um, because I made like the Ethan Allen I sold a few years ago, we were making like six to $800 a piece. Like I'd find them for a hundred bucks, sell them for 1400 buyer pays freight. Um, so now that I have all this space, I'm like, oh, I could buy furniture and put it in the living room of the rental house and, you know, keep like 10 pieces because we didn't have room until I added that on. But yeah, I so I was wanting to downsize reality as I'm probably not going to because I like buying lots way too much and I shop. Yeah. way too. Much. I've never really paid attention to my store size. It's something that I like. I need to have a certain amount of items in. I just checked I because I didn't know i'm at like a thousand two hundred listings right now and as long as it all fits in my other room i'm cool with it and I, if it's something i can handle you know yeah yeah i'm lucky because i have land like we have 11 acres i don't have to pay for storage we have sheds and then we have a rental house that is paid for so i have all yeah, kinds of pay to the cargo containers to the whole that's what people were trying to get me to get i'm like no like <laughs> Yeah, so all my little sheds have cute, like, the, my husband made fun of me because I got a front porch on it. He's like, you really could have used the space. Why did you? Because I wanted my shed to look cute. And <laughs> it's okay. Becky wants to know how many hours a day do you spend for business and how do you carve out family time? Uh, I don't have, like, a dedicated schedule or anything. I kind of just go as I'm feeling. I'm a very... When it comes to my business, the reason I started doing it was because I wanted to use my time how I wanted to use it. So if I felt like I wanted to be out with my girlfriend, Felicia, I'd go out with my girlfriend, Felicia. If I feel like I need to list stuff, then I'll go and list stuff. So I don't I don't carve out stuff just for my business. As long as I'm uh, happy where I'm at, you know, I'm I'm good with it. Yeah, kind of same uh, thing as Ben does it. Um most of my business hours are between eight and four just because that's when my kids are at school so that's of course when i can go sourcing get things done if it's like q4 i was going till midnight one o'clock in the morning after they went to bed getting getting stuff out but um especially if my, my kid does sports and stuff like that it's just if i have something like that to do instead i wanted the freedom to be able to do that so i probably do about the same as a nine to five but maybe it ends up being more because a lot of it's just on my phone. <laughs> Unconscious working. Yeah. So for me, I love what I do. Absolutely love what I do. This would I be this what I was doing for fun. You know, when I like when I had a full time job and doing that. So for me, I'm very fortunate. You know, I am full time. So and my wife works as a as a nurse. So, you know, I work around her schedule pretty much. 
So, you know, like for example, like today she, she works 12 hour shifts. So she worked a 12 hour shift. So I start in the morning. I just work all the way day. I'll get as much stuff done as possible today. And I'll work from when she left to, I'll work a 12 hour shift as well, 14 hours a day. But then tomorrow, like tomorrow's Valentine's day. We're not probably, we're not gonna go out to dinner, but we'll just do stuff at for lunch. We'll do other stuff, hang out. Like, you know, she was off on Monday. So we went to Home Depot. We, you know, so I, I work around her schedule and the kids' schedule, you know. So I, I have a stepson that's in high school. So I, I can take him to school. I can pick him up. I can take breaks whenever I want. I can work when they go to bed if I want to. So I make my own schedule. So literally, I do what I want to do just like both these guys that have the freedom to pick and choose when I want to work and when I don't want to work. If I want to take a week off, I take a week off. If I don't work, you know, 10 straight days, I work 10 straight days. It just depends what's going on in life. And uh, I have the freedom to run it any way I want. And that's the best thing about it. So, yeah, so my like, and I think a lot of things like for our business too, you have to figure we're making videos, we're recording while we're sourcing, we're editing videos. So mm -hmm. we have all of that on top of eBay stuff. Um, I have people that are listing for me, but I'm the one that proofs the drafts. I'm the one that researches and prices. So I still have to go through that stuff, especially if it's more rare stuff that I have to do a little more research on. Um, but I'm the same. I've actually started going to bed earlier. This show is past my bedtime now. Um, <laughs> every night, but Tuesday I'm in bed by like eight 30 with Dalton. Cause we're going to the gym five to six days a week. So we're up early. We're in the gym for an hour and a half every day. Um, and the nice thing is I can do that. Like if I had a regular job, I couldn't do that with this. I can, if I want to go swimming in the Springs after I can like tomorrow, Dagny's coming. She's meeting me at the gym. I'm not skipping the gym. I'm like OCD about the gym. Now Dagny's meeting me at the gym and then we're going to the Springs together, but I'm going to hang out with Dagny all day. And I can, you know, I don't have to like call somebody, take the day off. I can just make up that work whenever I want. And with Dalton, same thing. I take him every morning. I pick him up when he was playing soccer. You know, I could go to all of his practices, everything. That stuff comes first. But I definitely, I would say overall spend at least 50 to 60 hours because of that lovely phone time he was talking about that you don't yeah. realize. Like, and a lot yeah. of my time is online sourcing. So I might be sitting there hanging out with everybody watching TV, but I'm sourcing online auctions at the same time. So reality is probably at least 50 to 60. Um, yeah. That's just the reality of it. Yeah, the um, magical like background sourcing, sitting there watching the Super Bowl and looking yeah, for new lots on eBay. No, no, <laughs> I couldn't. No, I couldn't source while I was watching the freaking Super Bowl. I actually missed the ending of an auction because I was like so into watching the freaking <laughs> Super Bowl. I like missed it, and I'm like, well, Camille joined as, the membership. As a Bengals fan, I was just watching for Taylor Swift anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Mahomes. We talked about that last week. I don't really have a team. I just like football. So I just like watching it. But I was definitely going for the Chiefs. Um, I'm not like I like, well, I'm like into college football. <laughs> they suck this year. Hopefully this upcoming will be a lot better. But yeah. All right. Camille joined. Oh, we have our new member. Our new member thing too. So if you guys don't know, I have channel membership starting at $1.99 and I review your store. We do that once a month and I do live sourcing, which is my favorite thing. Every other Saturday I source for auctions with your zip code. So I get to shop with your money. That is one of the funnest things. And then we do live shipping every other Monday. This Monday, Dalton was like, Dalton was in everybody's face. He doesn't know space because he was out of school for a teacher work day yesterday, but yeah, so sometimes you get a dose of dolphin too. So here, it's a turtle now, because I like turtles more than dolphins. So Gino made me a turtle one. Here you go. <laughs> that's like a, uh, that's not that's nice when it's after good. my bedtime. No. Um, Brad and Kim said, I recently acquired a few boxes of really nice glass tile, glass tiles, 12 by 12. Each tile weighs three pounds. I have about 60 pounds worth. What's the best way to sell piece by piece or the box? 
uh, I don't sell glass tiles, but I would assume it's just like anything else. If you uh, want to get the most profit, I would guess selling piece by piece is probably the best way. But if you just want to move it, then chuck the box up. Yeah, kind of that same strategy. Like if you want to get rid of it, get rid of the whole thing quicker, sell by the box. Um, but definitely get your most amount of money, sell them individually, put your quantity up there, and then just put an description just in case they don't see that there's multiple quantities, just put multiple available. So that way, if they're doing a whole piece, they can buy 10 from you, they can buy 15. But individually, that's where you'll get your most money from. Yeah, pretty much what they said. Also, too, I would ship it flat rate shipping, priority mail, because it's 12 by 12, a foot in a flat rate box. You probably ship it for 15 bucks and ship a whole big stack of them for 15, but, 20 pounds. But yep. You can't put 12 by 12 glass tiles in a flat rate box because you'll have no room for padding and glass will break. <laughs> so that idea would not work because they're going to have to bubble wrap those tiles. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, just, I will, I, just feel it out and see if it yeah. works. Out. I mean, you can share it. You'll be fine. <laughs> Um, I just got a check today, and I don't even remember what it's for, from USPS for a claim. It was 23 whole dollars. I think they lost something. Um, so I would say if they're glass tiles, like for stained glass, because those are 12 by 12 tiles, it depends on the color. So if it's all the same friggin' color, if it were me, I would probably do like a single one with like 20 quantity available. And then I would do them in lots of five, lots of 10. I wouldn't want to do more than what I would want to ship <laughs> at once, even though they could buy them. But with if it's stained glass, some of the colors sell for like $20 a 12 by 12 piece. So like if you have like pretty colors, I would separate those out. And then if you have like boring colors, I would group those together because they're not going to be worth as much money. Rocks to be me said Houston USPS has had major issues with packages getting processed for months. Do delivery delays impact seller status? I'm getting complaints. I'm assuming she lives in Houston, not shipping to Houston. I'm assuming. Yes. Um, I mean, the delays themselves won't impact your seller status, but uh, complaints definitely will. But as long as you can show that, you know, you're, it's kind of out of your hands and in the post office's hands. Um, you know, you have, you have, you have some recourse that you can take, you know, you know, having people look into the cases. And I think that's just where having good customer service comes into play. Like, let them know, like, Hey, I understand shipping, you know, there's some problems. Sometimes there's delays, uh, you know, just kind of walk them through and have good customer service at that point. Yeah, definitely stay on if you like, especially if you know that it's a problem staying on top of it with customer service wise. But I, yeah, uh, I just pulled up like what affects your seller ranking. And it looks like once it's out of your hand, like once it's in the hands of the post office and it's scanned in, that won't affect your seller rating because it's uh, your what's the, the term they use late shipment. So you as long as you get it to the post office within the time you said you're going to, it's not going to affect you. But keep so up with I, the customer on that. I had an issue with one of my post offices here in Tampa where anytime I would ship bigger packages to them, they would put it off to the side. It's like they didn't want to move the big packages. And it's like they would just take all the other packages and put them in front of it. And it just kept getting pushed to the side, getting pushed to the side. So I actually changed. Anytime I was shipping big items, I had to go to another post office and actually fix the problem. So you might want to try taking your packages to a different post office. I know that might be a pain in the butt just to see if it may help your delays. If it's the actual center shipping hub, you know, another option you could do is try UPS or FedEx. It may cost you a little bit more money and you may have to eat some of that cost. If you already have a, it's going to be cheaper to ship through you nicest postal service. But at the end of the day, keeping your customers happy and making your packages get there is going to keep the, the uh, longevity of your account and the health of your account up. So that may be different options for you to look into. Also, too, if your packages are, are if you're selling something today and shipping out the next day, and you're just seeing those packages stuck and being delayed, if you go on the Postal Service website, you can actually file a missing package, and those packages will move like that. <laughs> yeah, I have I have two on my oh, yeah. phone right now. Yeah. I will say though, beware because 
if it's been like a week after it should have been delivered, they can file and force a refund on you yep. and you still have to give that customer the money back. And I think that's what, like I said, I think that's what I just got the check in the mail for today was delayed. Um, I had somebody email me. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it, I don't think it was Vicky. I'm not sure who it was that emailed me, but um I, if that was me and stuff was literally taking months, I would start going to, I would start going to UPS and I would tell yeah. my customers, look, I know my hub is having issues. This is, you know, and it sucks because it is going to be a little more, especially for first class stuff. But if it's, if it's months, they can force all those returns on you and you're kind of SOL. It's won't affect your, returns. yes, it won't affect yeah. your seller status, but you're going to have to give them the money back, which sucks because it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility for it to get to them. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then you're kind of SOL. All right, I'm going to give you a dolphin and then we got another super chat too. Gino decided he doesn't like that turtle video and he said he's making a new one. So, all right, here's <laughs> dolphin. All right. Lisa said, I just started to accept returns 14 days. Do you all list your inventory with the same return rule or do you have different rules for different types of inventory? Uh, so most of my inventory is automatically 30 day returns are accepted because eBay kind of forces them anyways. Um, but I do have no returns on certain items, but that that's very few and far between. Yeah, same rule. 30, 30 days is standard for all of my postings, except for, except for I do a lot of, um, like, I'll get lots of, like, laptops, game consoles, and um, I do, I'll sell bulk lots of video games. Those ones, I'll put uh, no returns as it, they'll still going to force a return if they want to, but um, just make sure, just post as is, no returns, and I'll specify for those, but 30 days is standard for all my stuff. Yeah, I, I use a same return policy for pretty much all, all my listings, unless it's like a one-off item or something that's broken. And and I'll put it in the description, you know, items broken, selling for parts, something like along yep. the. When I do those. I don't do. I don't allow returns because I'm selling as is yep. uh, on those items, and I'll state it in the title description. Um, but yeah, majority. I mean, anyone here who doesn't have returns on, you're you're hurting your business because eBay is going to force your hand to return anyway. And then why hinder your buyer from buying you because you have no returns? So highly recommend. Yeah, and you come up higher in the search too, and people yeah. might, you know, people might search only for people that accept returns just for that reassurance, even though they're not going to use it. Um, I have free thirty day returns on all my inventory because they're going to force it on anything regardless. So, yep. all right, Beachwalker gets the beach. Here you go, and then I see Troy in a super chat. Too. Oh, Bob, did you see that big dolphin? He's so like, <laughs> he's a little, what did he tell? Oh, I was helping him stuff his Valentine's cards for school tomorrow. And he said, mom, I'll let you do the honor of putting the card in the envelope. He's like a little adult. He's uh, <laughs> lucky you. I'll, I'll let you. Well, it's because like my daughter's 21. So like, there's no other little kids around. So all he's been around is adults. So he's and like got the vocabulary. The little, the little Valentines that they used to back in when we were in school, they had like the Space Jam ones. Will you yeah. be mine? It's like I want to. <laughs> we got them little balls, so they all got little squishy balls. So we had well, to stuff fun. balls into envelopes. It was a chore. <laughs> Troy <laughs> wants to know how much is how much reseller IQ is contained in a single live show. Apparently, not much because I can't even read um, on my account. <laughs> Um, great to listen in as I photograph. He's photographing NES games. Oh, for a second auction. Troy, tell I Troy, you should have mod status. Feel free to put the link to your auction. I'm okay with that in the chat. Raj just yeah, clicking all kinds. Apparently, there's not very there. much I do when we're proving it. <laughs> you guys, if you guys don't know, Troy is a part of uh, a bunch of resellers that opened up an auction house now and they bought a massive, my favorite. 
place. Yeah, they bought a massive, massive video game collection. We're talking like massive. Okay, so I won't say what they paid for it, but let's just say it's big money for this. You know, we're talking five figures, big money, tens of thousands of dollars for this collection. It's awesome. Display pieces. Um, super rare oh. store pieces. <laughs> yeah. The first one hasn't even run. He's getting ahead of the game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, whenever you get it up, just come back and you can put a link in the chat. And what's right, the option website? It's on Hybit. It's That's Hybit. what I yeah. use to buy almost oh, it's on everything. Hybit? Okay. Yeah. What's the, the name of the what, auction house though? Yeah. yeah, what's the name of your auction house? So we can let them know they can start bookmarking. Oh, there he put it. He put the link to the retro video yeah. game auction in the chat. Yeah. I'm gonna go. scoop that one out. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm going to so give one. Troy the original super chat because Troy's been around my channel since I think before a thousand subscribers. Here you go. Super I will say that he video some, is almost four years old. That's crazy. He has some really cool pieces. Like if you guys remember the old Super Mario Brothers 3 with the McDonald display piece, they yeah. had that. They had like a bunch Ooh, of store oh display gosh. pieces. Like, yeah, like that just hits them. It just hits that vintage nostalgic feeling for love me. that. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to pull it up on my section. That there is a lot of good stuff there. Oh, yeah, yeah there's that right now display. too. Noni wants there, to right? know when it breaks in the mail, can you claim it through the post office? That's kind of a loaded question. <laughs> um, so you can you you make a claim through the post office when it may, when it goes in the mail, yeah, but you have to be the one to open up the claim. You need to get pictures of the box from the buyer if you can, like, you know, the status of everything. It, the claims process sucks. And then it takes, uh, it'll take a while for you to actually get your claims approved or denied, hopefully approved, as long as you want it. Uh, usually they'll be like, oh, you didn't have enough pictures or something like that. And you have to go through a secondary process. But um, you, you go onto the post office's website and there's just like a you open a claim and then you type in the tracking number and then you submit, you know, all the information. Yeah, it's it's real hit and miss. I've I think tried to I've had three where I've tried to open a case and they always found something that was wrong with it. I mean, you might get surprised and actually get get the claim in your favor. But I was denied one because I didn't have the item with me physically. It's like I shipped it to California. I'm not going to have it with me. So. Yeah, it just depends on your postal service and also depends on how much the item is. Because if it's yeah. a certain amount of money, you have to bring back the packaging, you have to bring back the item. You know, if it's like under 100 bucks, a lot of times they'll just write a check and, and push it on. But I mean, if it's hundreds of dollars, there's additional steps you have to go through. So it just depends on the item and what the value is. Yep. I also want to point out something that I would think would be obvious, but might not be. And that is that that box better look like it was drop kicked. If it was broke <laughs> and the box looks okay, which means your packaging probably wasn't adequate, yeah. there's no point in filing a claim. So if you get a picture of an intact box with a broken item, it's on you. There's no point in filing a claim. Your box better be smushed. Oh, yeah. And they want to see that you had enough bubble wrap and packing to protect the item or they're not going to cover it either. If the reason it broke was through the packers negligence, you're not going to get your money back. Yeah. Um, so be very, very wary of that. If, if it, the box looks good, you're not going to get your money. Just, just I, FYI. I do have a good story about it though. I, I sold a Marantz receiver before it was sold for like 600 bucks. Got to the guy in the front, the front of it had been bent in the box. The whole bottom of the box was like split open. So it was like an easy case or whatever. I, I, and the, they were, we knew would, the case would take a while. So I just told the guy to go ahead and send it back to me. I'll give him the return or whatever. And I can just sell it for parts when I get it back. So eBay ended up backing me on that. They refunded me. My claim got approved by the USPS. They refunded me. So I got like a double <laughs> refund. And then I went around and go. resold the Marantz receiver again for parts and got even more money. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. <laughs> Berkshire Picker, since I can't cut, reply on YouTube, Thank you. Um, I'm not going out. I'm going straight to bed. Um, I don't know. My hair's like foofy and not to the club. Man, I had like, I, I don't remember when the last I When's the last time I've even went to a club? I don't even know. That's sad. 
It's been a long time. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, Chance wants to know how does you ship work on eBay? How to list? How does eBay track it? Proof of delivery. So does anybody but me use you ship? Nope. First. Go ahead, Kat. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so on eBay, you just put flat rate freight and you don't put an amount in. And you tell the bot, like in the description, you put email with your zip code for a freight quote. And you can go to UShip and get an approximate cost from you to them. Because from Florida to say South Carolina is gonna be cheap, but Florida to California is gonna be about three times as much. Um, eBay cannot track it and you do not have proof of delivery. Um, so, but you, so you ship will give you proof. So those drivers take a picture of the item at the person's house. So like I had one go to New York and the lady refused to open the door for him. So he sent me a picture <laughs> of it in the hallway and he said like the lady would not let him like bring it inside for her. Um, I've never had an issue. I've had like probably six to eight shipments on you ship. Um, and then all I do once I get the picture that it's at their house, I just uh, mark it as delivered and I mark it as shipped when they pick it up from me. Um, it, but there's no tracking number, but eBay doesn't ask for a tracking number when you have it flat rate freight. So they don't expect to get a tracking number. Um, but you ship is insured. You can add extra insurance. I typically don't. Um, the last, actually the last painting I sold for 3000, that was my last you ship, um, shipment, the painting got scratched and we don't know if it was here or the driver did it. He didn't take a picture when he picked it up. He only took it when it was delivered. We could see the scratch and he was amazing. I refunded the buyer. We, I didn't know if I did it or he did it. And he actually sent me PayPal half of what I refunded the buyer, which was almost all of his freight charge. So he was like an amazing, I was wow, that's really nice. impressed. Yeah. So yeah, there's no tracking. It would be like local pickup. You would mark it as picked up. You do have the scan thing for that, but for freight, you do not have that hmm. option. All right. So Noni said, Kat, I know they said the scarf didn't match. Um, she's saying she saw somebody put a crayon next to an item. I feel like, though, if they see, I had a couple of people comment that, like, and it is different. Like, the color on people's monitors are different. Like, we see colors different. And I'm fine to take it back. But, like, that lady leaving me negative feedback, like, I have automatic free returns. Like, it was just, and it was our only purchase on eBay. So I wish there was like a color chart though, but I wouldn't be putting a color, like this shirt got returned because they said it's not yellow. Is this not remember, yellow? That is definitely not That's yellow. That's clearly enough. purple. That's not my kind of yellow. Like remember that, that was returned for color too. And I look at it and I look at the picture and I feel like it looks exactly the same. So yeah, I don't know what to do with that except for just take it back and resell it. I always I refer to that meme, you know, remember the, is, is, is the dress black or blue? Remember that meme that yeah. on the internet? So you just And different just people saw it. different colors. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's black. No, it's top, blue. Top. No, it's black. Yeah. I had a top return two weeks ago. I had it listed at guava pink. I said, this is clearly coral. Like, <laughs> okay, it's the I same mean. color. It wasn't like, the pictures. Like it's the same thing. Yeah, that's how that that's one was too. Uh, Brad and Kim, I think we kind of answered. So Rod was saying the flat rate. I wouldn't do that because those glass tiles. So you would end up probably being cheaper UPS. Your heavier stuff is going to be better UPS. UPS I've noticed, has a little bit easier of a claims process too. Because I've had to, with, with Amazon, all my stuff goes through UPS. So I've had to do that on a, a shipment or two. And it's yeah. a little bit more, a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, Miss Linda said, can't afford Dymo or Rolo. So the one that raw, so she's asking for a cheaper one. I don't, Marsha, oh, yeah. do you have the link to the off Nova? If not, Rod and I use off Nova, just a yeah. generic Amazon brand and it works just as well. And it's like a hundred bucks. So yeah. I, 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 use a memo. I have a link in, yeah. in the description of any of my videos. It's okay, actually, it's right here. I don't know if this will work, but right here, this guy. Yeah. Yes. And it's uh, a lot better looking. <laughs> It looks a lot better than Rollo. 
<laughs> yeah, I just I just happened to find a, a deal I forget where it was I, where I just have two rollers that were pretty cheap. So I lucked my way into those, but the off Nova, a lot of people use those. I mean, Rose is a good brand, but nowadays, I mean, four or five years ago, that's what everyone just had. That was like the only thing out yeah. on the market. Now there's so many other options. I think I paid 80 bucks for mine because it was like on, on deal. Yeah. I got my Dymo there. on Marketplace for 80 bucks. I mean, you might be able to find a high name brand one on Marketplace or Craigslist use. Zebra is another yeah. brand to look at. Yeah. The quirky squirrel wants to know is putting your store on a way closing it or can you set it up to still get sales and set it to ship when you get back? You can do either. You can either close your store down so you don't get sales, which is what I do when I go on like a month long trip. Um, or you can set it up if it's like a shorter weekend trip or a week, a week long trip. You can set it up so you still get sales through that time. And then it just pushes your uh, your shipping day back and it puts a little banner up on your Listings letting customers know that you're out of town until a certain date. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I think then covered it. Yeah. Also, I was like, yeah. keep in mind when you do set it up, make sure you set up the day before or maybe like in the early morning because it does take a couple hours for it to register on eBay. And also, too, is when I when I do go for like short trips or mine, I actually turn off my vacation mode like the weekend before I come home or like a day or two before I come home, because that way it kicks your store back and going. And if someone buys something on Monday, you're getting back on Wednesday, you still have adequate time to ship out the item, but get your store back in the regular flow. All right. I am sharing. We're going to do the giveaway. Well, I do want to make a note on that. If you guys are doing, if you do set up your store on vacation mode, don't send out offers or yes. like, send a, an offer before you put your store on vacation mode, because if they accept that offer while your store is on vacation mode, then your shipping time doesn't get changed. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You have to be careful. Or if they bought something and not paid in the suckers pay yeah. after it, it doesn't have it. That's, yeah, that's annoying. Large. Yeah. All right. So hashtag bubble boy, we'll give away a tape gun from Joel at American bubble boy. And then I'm, GR pack is still on vacation. They're on vacation for the month of November. And then I'm going to give away this cute eBay fanny pack. Woo. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. All right. So hashtag bubble boy. Let's see what our next question is. Uh, is what not degenerating as a selling platform? There seems to be more chaos, shipping issues and general internal chaos. Um, I don't know if degenerating is the right word. Uh, I think there's starting to be a lot more sellers, so it is getting more competitive, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's growing the platform. But I think the shipping problems and kind of chaos just comes down to there being more sellers, especially if they're inexperienced sellers, not knowing how to ship stuff properly and stuff like that. It's just I think it's just growing pains for the for the platform. Yeah, look at it, whatnot purely. Uh, cause I use it as a, a sourcing site. I like that there's more on there now. Um, cause there, those viewers are more spread out. So I get better deals, but I've, I've had a couple of shipping issues, not to where any complaints about it, but I still like whatnot. Look at selling later I this think, year. I think people forget that whatnot just started in 2019. It's, it's brand new. It's a baby. I mean, eBay, if you, if anyone here, like I started selling on eBay in 19, I started on eBay in 1999. eBay was a wild west those first five or 10 years on there. Like you could ship anything, you could sell anything on there. Like it's growing pains. They are they are learning as they go. And as they run into issues, they're gonna hit the issues first before they adjust things. So I think it's just adjusting as they go and grow. I mean, they had exponential growth. I mean, nothing like they've seen before for a first selling platform. Mm -hmm. And you know, they focus on, on different categories. They're, you're trying to hire new staff, trying to train people. And it's a lot different than just selling a regular platform because people are going live. So there adds a whole other element to it. So I think overall, I think Whatnot's doing tremendous with what they have to work with. But I mean, you're going to run into a lot of issues with it. I just think it's growing pains, you know, through the process. Yep. And they are getting adjusted and they are fixing things on the way. But usually you're going to have the scammers, you know, Whatnot needs to catch up to the scammers just like any platform does. You know, whatnot, so they have to, you know, catch up to all the issues and problems they run into and two things get adjusted. But overall, I still think it's a good platform to source on, a good platform to sell on. Okay. Aaron just messaged me and said, I said GRO Pack was on vacation the whole month of November and it is February. 
So <laughs> apparently my brain is not functioning tonight. Um, I, I've been kind of negative about whatnot, but I think, and again, I'm going to put it on me <laughs> that I haven't adapted and overcome to make it work like I need to. Uh, because I told you guys, Sandy made a lot of money in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Rod's doing well with Disney pins. So obviously you can still do well. I just haven't adjusted to find what will work well for me now because my sales are 10% of what they were all last year when I do a sale. So it'll take me two hours to make 10% of what I used to. So then I'm not very motivated to do more sales, but I need to try and find some other stuff that might sell better on there to, or like Sandy was doing mystery boxes and like she was selling stuff every 10 seconds. I told you guys, she did like over two, 2000 in sales in 15 minutes and i'm just sitting here going holy crap like hundred dollars every single and i'm like man so i definitely need like i if i want to that's all i'll say like i've been putting more time into my youtube and my videos so it's up to me to decide like where my time is better spent yeah. and you know or what i want to do that's the nice thing with this too like we can do whatever the heck we want to do and decide what's more beneficial for us. And yeah. So I think it's just growing pains. It's getting bigger. There are more sellers. Like Rod said, it's going to take time to weed it out, get everything straight. Um, but I think you're going to constantly have to be innovative to keep making the money you're making. Like yeah. it's not, it's not coming easy. Like you have to work for it. Yeah. I think it, it'll be interesting to see what not uh, when eBay expands out their live selling into the further categories and starts allowing um, non-invited people to sell on the platform. Cause right now it's in like the, like the beta, you have to be invited to sell and they only do certain shows, you know? Um, but it is coming. So I'm, I'm wondering what, what not's going to be like once, once eBay comes out with theirs as a competitor. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be yeah. nice, especially yeah. if I can just take my items from my eBay store and just move them over to live yeah. selling. Like that's a game changer, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that would be beautiful. I would love that. When when eBay flew me out there for eBay Open, they gave us a little background tour of the of the like sneak peek of the things to come, and it looks really really cool. So that's it's awesome. just they're just dragging their feet on it. That's my only problem. Oh man. yeah, they, they are losing so much mark, you know. And I don't think they know how to properly roll it out. I think that's the problem. Well, even now, even all the live shows that are on there now, it's like so hidden, and a lot of people don't even know eBay has live shows right now. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know until a couple weeks ago. I got an email. It's like, "Hey, let's sell it. Like, <laughs> this is live." I'm like, this is a thing. Like, I saw they had like the in person thing a couple years ago. I didn't. I didn't even know. It's all thing all live seems like higher dollar stuff, like really yeah, high yeah. stuff, and it's like just the listings. It's not like showing yep. stuff. It's just the listing. Cindy wants to piggyback on the on the whatnot. What days or of the week or month or is there any time of day that you have found having sales are better on whatnot. This is why I'm still figuring out. So I'll let you guys, I'll defer to you guys. I know I used to watch whatnot all day at work. So that would that'd be <laughs> when I was watching them. <laughs> so this is something that I've been messing around with a lot. Um, I started doing afternoon. So all my shows originally were between like six and eight at night originally, but then you have a lot more competition because people are getting off work at that point in time. But then you also have people on the West Coast that are at home, you know, um, five that are still at work. Yeah, they're still at work at that point in time. But so I would say is if you do it in the evening, like East Coast time, you're going to have more competition. If you do it early in the day, you're going to have less competition. Um, I would say I've done two o'clock shows. I've done nine o'clock shows. And I have gotten similar types of crowds in, you know, some have done better than others. But yet I get different. I get new followers no matter what time you do it. So for me. I'm more or less right now running, going to start running afternoon shows and night shows because it's going to be a completely different crowd. I'll get some carry on over there, but my ultimate goal is to build a, a new marketplace or build a new set of customers based off, you know, the categories I want to sell in. So if I keep focusing on these, you know, a couple of different categories I, I sell in, I'm going to do it multiple times of the day to get multiple, you know, customers in there. So I can do my ultimate goal is to do a pop up show whenever I want and have, you know, 100 people in there that I can just sell. So anywhere I go, if I travel for a highway sale, if I do something, I can log on, pop up, go and whatnot, do a pop-up show real quick, 
and then be able to sell off my items. Yeah, and Ryan, if you guys don't know, is Tucker Finley's dad. Yep. He said you want to look when the big sellers in your category and either go before or after them. Don't try going <laughs> yeah. up against them. That's probably the worst thing you could do. I have been surprised. Like, I've done some 11 a.m. shows, which is 8 a.m. on the West Coast, and I've done really well. Yep. Um, I think different things sell better at different times like my linens and stuff seem to do better like morning early afternoon shows where the jewelry does better at night so i think you kind of need to take you know what you're selling and just look and see you know what works but it's crazy i've done like an 11 a.m show nothing sold i do the same exact catalog two days later and i sell out at the same time so it like it you never know who's going to be on there so all right let me pick a winner for the tape gun and all you'll need to do is email me joel gives me a code to give you so you, it'll ship right to you dun, 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 dun. phyllis is the winner and then let's do hashtag ebay and i'll give away the fanny pack hashtag ebay for the fanny pack all right, let's see. Congrats. We already, what, huh? Oh yeah, congrats. I'm like in La La Land tonight, obviously. Um, this is a little bit different than earlier. So Laura's asking like, how long does it take you to research an item that you're listing typically? Uh, it That completely depends on the item. Like some stuff I just know right off the bat, so I don't have to research it at all. And some stuff that I'm completely clueless on, like say I got a piece of glass, like I know it's something good, but I don't really know much about it. That'll take me a lot longer. So that's a that's a very item dependent question. Yeah, pretty much. Meant that. Like my games that I do on FBA, I have a spreadsheet that I go off of like this, how much I pay for console this game and since i wrote it like i pretty much have those just i can pluck off the shelf and not even have to do any research but then like i i don't do many clothes um so anything that's not patagonia north face or uh a, like nike i have to rely on good old google photos and depending on how long it takes for me to find it on lenses i can spend about five ten minutes on a piece of clothing just because i'm yeah. oblivious to them yeah, I would say majority of my eyes, no more than like two, three minutes for most of the stuff. Because a lot of times I'm, a lot of times, a lot of us, when you're outsourcing at either yard sales, thrift stores, or, you know, flea markets, you may be looking things up while you're out and about. So you're going to have a general idea on the item already because before you bought it, especially if you have to pay up for an item. But I would say, you know, just like everyone else's panel, if it's something that I don't know or very unique or one-off item, you know, I'm going to be searching eBay. I'm going to be searching WorthPoint. I might have to use Google Lens. If you guys don't have Google Lens, download it. The Google app allows you to take a picture of it, and it does a reverse search. It searches the internet for that photo to see if it comes up anything similar. So that's a really good tool that will cut a lot of time from your researching out. Yeah, so for I'm the same way, but mine are different things. So like vintage linen, I just price what I think it should cost because I'm not going to find the same piece of vintage linen. So I just know from my history what I can get for it. Um, but like I have some yacht tool thing. I had to research that on WorthPoint, but I researched it on WorthPoint before I bought it. So I knew where I was listing it when I got it because I researched it to figure out how much to pay for it. Um, and a lot of times, like I bought a whole closet of clothing and a lot of the brands were the same. So I just search my own listings and see where I priced other shirts that brand and then I just go with it. Um, so that's not long. Um, typically under two minutes, I would caution you not to spend too much time. Cause like if you spend like 20 minutes researching something and it's worth $10, like my, I feel like my time's worth more than that. I would rather yeah. just throw $15 price tag on it and be done. And if I miss something sometimes, okay, more power to whoever knows more than I do, because that time researching can really add up, especially if you don't have higher priced items. Like, so be very cautious spending too much time researching some stuff that's lower. And don't, but you'll learn with experience. You'll yeah. know what to spend more time researching. Yeah. And you'll get faster and faster at research too as you, as yeah. you go on. And there's a, it's okay too to 
pay for your education. So I know we say don't spend a lot of time researching, but if you're buying a big lot of stuff and you want to learn about that product or learn about like yeah. you're buying vintage toys and that's something you, you want to learn, it's okay to, you know, to spend a lot of time on that because in the future that will pay off. They, you won't spend that same amount of time if you want to especially do a deep dive in that category. Yeah. And then yeah. there's other times too, I would say is like cats done this. I've done this where like I had all these, I had 3,000 something Disney pins in my house. I'm not going to look up all these pins. So I just literally started <laughs> whatnot, five bucks an auction, and I put them up there. And there's people that told me, like, Gigi Collectibles comes on here. She told me she bought a $16 pin for me that she sold on eBay for 150 bucks. Like, so I'm going to a great her. deal from that, you know? Yeah. I mean, but I didn't want to do the research. The amount of time I would have spent would take me months to go through it every single one. So I let the market dictate it. And, you know, as long as I'm making a profit on it, you don't always have to be the end sell to the end user yeah. you can sell to the middle person and they can make money on it too yeah, yeah like sure. i just had an example of that today um i picked up a tub of beyblades from a thrift i paid 15 for it it's like 10 pounds of beyblades i started to go through like two or three of them like i could list these individually and it, it'd take forever throw it up just put it up at an auction and i made a profit i looked up i just was curious so i looked up who bought it it was a toy store, like a, a vintage toy store. Yeah. So they're going to piece them out. They'll make their money. I made yeah. my money. The thrift store made their money. And it's done, time. right? Yeah. Yep. No, for sure. And that is okay. I don't have 10 guys. pounds of Beyblade sitting there now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's pick a winner real quick for the eBay fanny pack so I can get it off my desk. Dun, da, da, da. Gina. 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 With a puppy that looks like my puppy. What a great photo. <laughs> My puppy looks just like that one of mine. All right. Uh, Pit Quiddity said, why won't whatnot let us control shipping? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's some internal reasons. Uh, it's probably just for simplicity's sake. It make it easier on the, uh, on the people coming in who don't want to learn the ins and outs of shipping. I'm sure that's the reason. The reason is because whatnot makes money off shipping as well. That would so make sense. By them not controlling shipping, because by them taking the money for shipping and giving you the labels, they're making a profit on each and every shipping package that we send out. That's why they they control shipping. That's why Poshmark controls shipping as well, because they make money off shipping. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Molly wants to know what happens if an item breaks during the return. So if a buyer's sending something back to you, she said, if you have free returns, can you deduct the half from their refund? So like the item got to them in good condition and then it yeah. broke on the way back to you. Hmm. And, yeah. and yeah, that's them not packing it correctly. Um, I would reach out and just let eBay know like, hey, it's broken. And, uh, you know, have obviously documentation of that. I'm, I've never had it had to go through that, but I'm sure uh, you just submit a case and it, it'll probably end up being X amount off the return. If not the whole thing, really. Uh, I'm not really sure on that. Yeah. I had an, an instance like this sold a MacBook. It wasn't the one that they wanted. They shipped it back to me in a manila envelope, <laughs> a MacBook and just a fold over envelope. Um, so it was, it was dented. I don't know how the screen didn't crack. But it was wow. the aluminum was all bent and everything. Um, ended up I had to file a case with eBay. They got um, I had to do a partial return. Um, it worked out because I could I mean sell the MacBook. It was just less, but yeah, I ended up having to split the return with them. Yeah, usually when you when you do that, you follow through, and then depends on how the eBay handles the situation. Sometimes the eBay will side with you or do a split, but sometimes eBay takes care of both sides. Like they. Yep. You know, re you get that you to keep your money and then they'll refund the buyer and they'll eat it. So it just depends on the situation. It's a case by case. But the, the initial step is contact eBay immediately and let them know the situation. Yeah. Yeah. You can file. You can automatically take that 50 percent and then you can file with eBay for the other half. Catherine, so if you guys missed it, I just put a video out about an hour before we went live over on Cat's Treasure Hunting on my second channel. I am like addicted to buying friggin' turbuses. Like it is like I have a problem. So she's another turbusaholic. I bought like five turbuses and then I had to go back and make sure I didn't miss any because heaven forbid I miss a turbus. That that started because I found fly fishing turbus cups that sold for 70 friggin' dollars. Most of them do not. I will tell you, most are worth like 12, 15 bucks. 
but some of them are rare and will sell. I, I did not get the rare ones, but I got them. So. Thank you, Miss Catherine. I appreciate you. Here is it, Dalton. Here you go. I know all the dancing. <laughs> um, let's next? see. Do you think it's safe to sell something that's worth twenty five thousand? Is there shipping insurance that covers it if something happens? Uh, I know people that sell. I, I've met people that have sold hundred thousand dollar baseball cards on eBay before. Um, at eBay Open, there's a guy there who specializes in high end baseball cards and i asked him this exact question how does he handle the insurance because i've sold things i, I sold an ipod for six thousand five hundred dollars the usps will only cover up to five thousand dollars on their insurance or yeah five thousand dollars i believe it was on their insurance um so if you sell over that and want to insure it you have to go through a private insurer which is what the guy who does baseball cards suggested he does and it does and then he even for some of his higher end stuff on like the 100k cards he'd even hire a, a secure truck to go and drive it and everything for themselves where they had it under lock and key the entire time that's what i would do yep yeah it, it you'd have to go through something because something that ex expensive that's too much of a, yep. is that that's twenty thousand dollars so it's left up the air if you just do the the one click click yeah, insurance 100%. i'd get i'd yeah. get private insurance and pay for a, a hand delivered if i sold that i would drive yeah. anywhere in the u.s yeah. like yeah. i legit i'd be coming to see you guys in cali like yep. local you go. I'll see you in four days it would be cheaper for you to go buy a gun and do it yourself cat than it would be to pay the insurance and pay someone else that's what i'm saying there. i go on a friggin road trip like <laughs> honestly um, yeah, i would too why not oh, yeah, yeah i delivered a three thousand dollar one to dc because i was driving up to pennsylvania to see my friends anyways sold a three thousand dollar piece saw he was in dc i'm like hey i'm driving through there in a couple of days you want to meet me we met in a pet smart parking lot and <laughs> he picked it up um the highest i've sold on ebay is i sold two three thousand dollar purses together for six thousand and i just insured it to that max of five thousand because i only had sixteen hundred into it so like i knew my cost was covered um but I I honestly, if I was selling stuff that high, I would use U ship because they have what they call white glove delivery. And that's what I did with my $3,000 painting. And that's where it's hand delivered. Like the driver keeps it like it was in the front seat with him. It doesn't go in the back of the truck. It's like they can see your item the whole time. And you can buy insurance on U ship too. So, yeah. Now you guys are be all he didn't, he he didn't have on the gloves, Ben. He didn't have on the gloves. I had to go look at my my what pin to see if it? where where my two thousand dollar pins at right now. I just realized <laughs> it, it's, it's sitting in the shipping hub right now in Chicago because uh, it's it's being sold international. So it's just oh, sitting well, at nice. the at eBay least. warehouse. Once it leaves that facility, you're you're golden. It's a, once it gets checked in the facility, I'm golden. Yeah, I mean, then you're yeah. good. eBay's yeah. already they already signed for it. So yep. Rebecca wants to know how much time do you spend sourcing versus listing and putting stuff away? Um, I, I, I think it's going to be different for us since we are doing content. Um, I think I go sourcing more than what I normally would. Um, because if I wanted to, I could source online and not put as much time into it if I didn't want to. Um, but since I like going out and seeing stuff, I tend to like to go sourcing more. And when it comes to listing and stuff, I'm now I'm very fast at it. If I'm comparing my sourcing time to my listing time back when I first started, I'm very, very much more uh, faster at it now. So I, I, I probably spend more time sourcing than I do listing and stuff. Yeah, definitely more on the, uh, the, the sourcing. First thing, like, I think I'm up to, I think my schedule, I usually go about four four days a week listing is I, I'll sit down for t about three hours, two days a week and tear as much photos as I can. And then I'm sitting at soccer practice. I'm listing, watching TV, relisting, just something I don't have to be hands on just listing all day. And then I'm not sure what that putting stuff away thing is. <laughs> Organizing probably. Yeah. The, the floor of my out. garage, Boarding. floor of my garage seems pretty good. Nah, 
we've got <laughs> shelving and stuff so it's pretty much just i've got my shelves right there next to i have uh the counter in my back of my garage is where i do my photo so yeah. it just goes from the photo around the show spend my time so i think i think ben hit the nail on the head because we create content with what we do we have to continue to have fresh footage to put out for our channels i put out two two videos a week on my my picking channel my flipping channel i've been putting out two videos a week so be i'd be 100 percent honest when i say this i would not have to source probably for the next six months if i didn't have a youtube channel you do I four could, videos a week yeah i yeah, just I do. started doing every other day man well, well, I mean, every yeah. other day man. on both channels so really i'm doing <laughs> every day grind, brother yeah yeah i got i got goals i gotta reach man so uh but uh the flipping channels are ones are easy because it's just walk me rock around my house just showing what i sold you know what i mean and just talking yeah. about topics but uh it's the picking channels that that take the most time but i, and I also live in florida too so like our we're, we're coming to like picking season right now where it's like going to be just crazy balls of the wall for the next two months yep. and we get so much good stuff so I, and I think i can speak probably for almost all the content creators out there when it comes to a sourcing we all source too much stuff in a way because since we have to go out to get content we're getting so much so we could be using that time to be listing and other things but uh see i have listers so i don't have that problem i have yeah. to source for them but you wouldn't um, have listers if you'd probably be listing yourself without listers if you without you youtube and yeah yeah, yeah yeah for sure um yeah. I typically go out sourcing one day a week, but I will go to three or four sales or thrift stores and get three or four videos in a day um, for the next week. I just started doing every other day on my second channel, I'm trying to do every other day here, which equals Kat is doing a video every day again. <laughs> Welcome to two years ago. Um, That's so crazy. But I, I like... But I get it all in a day. So really, I honestly spend more time listing stuff than I do sourcing, but not if you put sourcing and editing videos together. Um, then I would you spend really more time, time on that. Takes. It takes a lot of time. Um, and I don't put stuff away. I pay people to put stuff away <laughs> now. Um, I don't try and hide any of it. Like I have a full-time eBay employee. So, and then I have a part-time high schooler that lists for me. So like my full timer will pull the stuff like that's all from the last haul from the video that came out tonight. That's the haul. It's like tons of stuff. So she actually, I'm, I'm spoiled rotten. She takes it out of my car. She lays it out for me to video. Um, I come in and video and then she disperses it if she's going to list it or the high schooler will. And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> The next one's ready because I keep like, I'm like, okay, it's in my trunk or it's behind the driver's seat, behind the passenger <laughs> seat. Um, yes, welcome to Kevin's world. I love I love it too. And I'm getting like a super good response on my second channel, which is encouraging and makes you want to do more, you know? So I'm super happy with that. Look who decided to show up an hour and a half late. That's why he sent $10 instead of his normal $5 late fee. <laughs> Mark <laughs> said better late than never. Yes, I agree. I'm going to I'm going to give you Yvonne's mermaids cuz we haven't used those tonight. Here you go. Now that would be a fun <laughs> I'm going to become a mermaid. Yvonne I I want to be a mermaid. Yvonne <laughs> Co -host, or she hosted the show me, when me and Rod were in Phoenix. We were in Phoenix speaking at the List Perfectly event. The whole panel was not us. And Yvonne made that super chat just for her show that she filled in for us. And I kept, I asked her if I could keep it and use her mermaids. All right. Busy Girl says, I got my payout today before I could do a partial refund for an international sale. The customer overpaid by a lot. She hasn't gotten it yet and didn't ask for a refund, but oh, 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 busy girl. If it's international, she's paying for shipping from the hub to her too. She did not overpay. Do not refund. Yeah. Uh, and if it's a return, eBay will hand, if you sold through eBay international shipping, which you should have, they should handle all the ref refunds and process on their end for you. You shouldn't have to do anything. So if she has a problem with that, she needs to contact eBay directly, not you. Correct. 
Yes. Yeah, that's going to be those hub and import import fees. So you should be covered what? there. She, yeah, she, covered. she right. paid the right. Yeah, you don't refund her. Um, if you guys don't know, actually, in the middle of me and Rod is Wiki Wachi, the home of the mermaids. You can go and watch mermaids underwater in the springs at Wiki Wachi. I need You'll to go because I've seen this upcoming podcast. summer every Tuesday night from five to nine. <laughs> ben will be there with his tail on. <laughs> Melody said, how do you ship board games now that you can get boxes from USPS? Melody, you just have to ship it priority, not ground. And I ship them. I Frankenstein the boxes and stick them two together on top of it and push it through. Yeah. Yes, mermaids for real. Take that Look, box. Ben has an example. Put another box <laughs> right here. Put your board yep. game inside and tape them together. You're good. You just have to ship priority, not ground. Ship yep. priority, tape them together real good. And ship board games, tennis rackets, all that annoying. I, long I stuff. would be careful. So she's saying it was four ounces. They charged her twice. I would be they. I would be careful with that. I wouldn't refund. I would say I just director be like, it's an international sale. I'm hands off. It's all in eBay's court. And then director to contact eBay customer service directly. Yeah, I, I talk, yeah. International shipping is what I talked about at eBay open. So I'm a good source on this. Tell her <laughs> to, tell them to contact uh, eBay directly on that one. Ben's got you covered. <laughs> He's the professional. Um, Oh, speaking of, Ben, then you should know the answer to this question. Does eBay International have a hub in Las Vegas? He had a guy from the Netherlands make a couple offers, but he, he was saying it was, I wonder if it's a freight forwarder. Um, it's, I don't think there's a hub in Vegas. Uh, yeah, I don't think there is. It, it was probably a freight forwarder. Yeah, because even if you get the offer from them, it would still say, the Netherlands, it probably wouldn't. It'd say, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a freight border, which usually it's like Portland. I've noticed, but there's a couple of different. Yeah, the original ones were like Portland, uh, Seattle, and a couple other ones. Yeah, but, yeah. So but maybe Ben's gonna get the seashells, so he can be a mermaid, <laughs> not a merman. I don't yeah. know. I gotta cover up my tatas. <laughs> <laughs> Jane said, I have dozens of many travel beauty products. I'd like to sell them bundles and get rid of them. But making those bundles doesn't seem to work for actually selling them. What to do? Um, I don't know about selling them as bundles and stuff, but I know that some travel stuff can do very, very well um, individually. So it might be worth it, if, especially if they're older ones that are not produced anymore to look at them individually. Um, but if they, if, it, if they are just, you know, junk ones, then I would just toss them up and let them go for whatever they sell for. I, I wouldn't even bother pricing them as a, uh, as a buy it now. I'd just let them go auction. Yeah. But something like that, like see if you can pick out ones that might sell individually, then yeah, just auction them 99 cents or whatever you feel comfortable with and you know, let the market go on that one. Rod, do you have anything? Nope, just what they said pretty much. So so I've sold them and I've done well selling them in lots. I found selling them, my key was selling what would fit in a padded flat rate because those little travel sizes, the weight adds up really fast. So if you sell 15 yeah. or 20, it's like a three pound rate, but you can tape the tops, put them in Ziploc bags, throw them in a padded flat rate and ship them for 10 bucks. And... I was doing lots of 20 and I was getting between 25 and $40 for them, depending on the brand. But I would try and keep the same brand because people don't really like mixed ones. So like lotion, shampoo of the same type. The Disney hotel ones, I will tell you, do very, very well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are quite a few that do well. I actually, I bought some <laughs> because we went to a hotel and Dalton was obsessed with their shampoo and conditioner. And so the people didn't make full size. It was like they only made hotel shampoo and conditioners. And I went and bought a lot of them off eBay for him. So he oh, got the shampoo um, and conditioner. So, you know, yeah, if you yeah. like it, you like it. If you're interested um, in getting that in stuff, uh, Thrift to Travel on Instagram does a, a ton of shampoo and beauty products, expired ones, and gives bowlers all the time. Great page to follow. Yeah. 
What's the point? Maybe yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, and a lot of people get them for like um, the homeless. They make like gift bags for the homeless. And then they also will do the military care packets because they don't want to send the full size bottles overseas. Ah, <laughs> um, so I don't know how that even happened. So they actually um, will send the mini ones to the military personnel. Light streamer said, I listed a rain shower head that is not allowed for sale in California due to its water output. All my offers are from California. <laughs> I've been declining them. What would you do? I don't know. I've never had that problem. Honestly, I wouldn't have even known it wasn't allowed in California. So I probably would have just <laughs> accepted an offer and sold it. Yeah. I mean, just being from Ohio, I, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, yeah. I probably would have accepted it. And I mean, I guess what I guess it would just end up maybe if the post office dug into it, found out what was in it, get it returned or it would return to sender. But yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. Sometimes they're asked for forgiveness and it is for permission. I probably just <laughs> sold it and just, yep. saw it and just see what happens. So you can also block buyers from a certain state on that listing. Mm -hmm. That is what I would do if you're worried about it. Cause like some people won't ship to Alaska or Hawaii or Puerto Rico. Same thing. You could block California from buying it. I would also put it in my yeah. listing just to make sure. <laughs> Look, Marty, Marty is in California and says, just send it. No one cares. We need water output out here. <laughs> California is nuts. Well, um, <laughs> like in Pennsylvania, you had to get your car inspected and then like they would adjust your car to pass inspections and then, put the sticker in your car and then right away they just readjust it right back to how it was like <laughs> <laughs> right like yeah all right speaking of marty who just said she needs a shower head um she said she's a new seller here she sold jewelry on ebay she has a buyer that hasn't paid since friday night i've sent three messages no response so what is the process does she cancel or will ebay automatically cancel it um she said she saw to wait for four days. Yeah, so I just let I just wait for eBay to automatically cancel. I believe it's three days, isn't it, for eBay to automatically it's four. cancel? It's four. It's four, four days. Four days no pirate. I just I just wait it out and let them cancel it to get the ding on their account and move on, relist it. Yeah, as long as not it's not something that like I need to sell this now, like I have a ton of money invested in it, kind of thing. Let it ride, let them get the ding on their account for them doing something they shouldn't do and and put it back up for sale. This eBay will take this, care of all that. eBay, if you're listening, this is the part that upsets me the most. <laughs> I hate when I sell an item and I have like 30 watchers on it or like 25 watchers. I just sold an item yet two days ago with 26 watchers on it. And then the buyer said, I'm sorry, I decided not to go not to move forward payment. Now I have to relist that item and I lose all those watchers. So but you, didn't they them, change it? Didn't it just change to where it stays available until it's paid for? Not all I think listings. That's... Not all. Oh, not, not all everything. Listings. Yeah. So eBay has so everyone people that don't know, eBay has a new beta feature which if you send out an offer to someone, the, the buyer accepts the offer, the item will still be listed on eBay until the buyer actually pays for it. Not all items, it's but something they are testing and rolling out. So. Snowberry Vintage is making a good point. It is for business days, so Saturday yeah. and Sunday do not count. Yeah. So that means that Friday, they're only at two days right now for those official days. I never knew that. That's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. And eBay, right. uh, they know we all don't like this. We, we, when I was out at eBay open, this was like the biggest like pain point for people. And we had like a three hour discussion on, on it and brainstorm what they could do. And it's, I mean, it's super simple what they need to do. They just need to have credit cards on file. But, yep. you know, it's right. Every where they hold goes. it until the seller you know, accepts or declines. So, Ben, I, we have a theory on this. Do you know why they, they don't do this? No. Because it boosts their sales numbers for investors and for stock options because yep. it shows projected sales for it. And then you're actually on the yep. backside. They're, those sales are, are being taken out, but it shows sales, projected sales. That's why they keep it keep it doing. That's, That's the rumor. Yeah, I wish I, I would know, have. I, would I, have have that, I was very blunt when I was out there. I was asking like pain point stuff, point blank to him, like putting <laughs> in the hot seat. If I, if I like, we're not that, I would have brought it back. He makes us do work. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, I'm going to give her Rod because I haven't given anybody Rod tonight. So here you go. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's my wrestling character. No one does it anyone else. So. <laughs> All right, last question, and then I will let Ben and Adam and Rod all tell you bye, and I'll tell you bye. Marcella, and this isn't even a question. She said, thank you. It's exciting. You all inspire me to go far. You are very welcome, and thank you to all of you in the chat hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Ben, I'm going to make you big and let you tell everybody bye and where you'll be if you have what not planned or whatever you got going on. So here's Ben. Yeah, so. See you guys. Again, you can follow me over here on YouTube. It's at Ready, Ready Set Resell. Same with Instagram and TikTok now. Uh, and I just started doing Whatnot again recently. So I have a ton of inventory that I need to get on there. So I'll be doing quite a bit of shows soon. So see you guys. Thanks for having me. Here's Adam. Uh, thank you guys again for having me on. This was my first kind of live QA session. Um, I had a lot of fun. I'm planning on getting new YouTube content out this year. I've been not doing it this last year with going uh, full time uh, in April. So figuring that out, you can catch me here, Cincy Flipper and on my Instagram page. And thanks again for having me on. Perfect. Rod, what's going on? I dropped the brand new video today on my picking and punching channel. I uh, went to the Webster flea market. If you guys aren't familiar, that is the biggest flea market in the state of Florida. And I bought some mystery boxes off the back of some guy's truck and it paid off big time. So go watch that video. <laughs> I'll drop a new video tomorrow on Flippin' Punching Channel. And then next week, I'm doing a massive Disney whatnot. I'll be selling lounge flies, Disney collectibles, everything starting at like five bucks or less. So I'm going to blow it all out. Nice. I put out a video on catch treasure hunting earlier today. Tomorrow is going to be a paperweight research video for some lower dollar ones that you guys requested. I don't know when I'll be on whatnot. I'm going to the Springs to hang out with Dagny tomorrow and we might jump in the cold water in the 60 degree weather. Um, that is our plan. And I'm bringing the GoPro. <laughs> I post those videos on Instagram. So if you want to see that, definitely check Instagram out. And then, oh, I have, they yelled at me last week. So I've been going to the gym five to six days a week. I'm down like 20 pounds. I am like, if you know me, I go big and that's included working out. I am like, OCD about it now. So I have another Instagram page. It's Operation Healthy Cat. If you want to watch my workouts and my progress there. And next week, good, good friend of mine. We are going to have Jimmy Old School Flips on. And we are also going to have Rock, Rocky Top Picker on next week. My fitness Instagram is Operation Healthy Cat. It took me forever to decide on a name. There, One of my followers... And I and her name is No More Fat Cat on there. So follow her too because her name is like epic. And I was like, man, I want your name. So follow no follow No More Fat Cat too because she is awesome. She's a Katrina just like me, and we've actually started chatting a lot. She's lost like seventy pounds, so she's doing amazing. Now I have my whole like weight loss workout group of friends, and a lot of you guys have followed me over there, and I really appreciate it because. Mm -hmm like having to put videos up every day m makes a little more accountability for me as well. So yeah, I appreciate you guys coming and we will see you guys next week. And thank you, Ben and Adam and Rod for still coming. And yep. we will see you guys next still week. Bye. Yeah. Bye everybody. We're still coming. <laughs> <All right. laughs>